Hello! I'm coming to you just a bit early so I can get the camera in the tripod. All right, are we excited? All right, I can see you on my iPad now. I've got to make sure my comments stay on. <laughs> because last time I didn't even realize they were off. So, you know, there is that. I'm trying to figure out the best configuration too. So just bear with me. Um, while you are guys, while you guys are popping on, I, I added this little <coughs> reminder here. Uh, don't forget when you share your work on Facebook and on Instagram that you don't forget to add hashtags. Hi, everybody. So uh, when I first started on Instagram, I didn't really understand the hashtagging. I thought it was kind of stupid, actually. People would have 49 million hashtags on their posts, and I'm like, seriously, how much time does that take? Hi, everybody. Um, but I've come to realize that hashtags are super important because hashtags are how I see what you do. And so we, if you use any of my products, it doesn't have to be 100% my product, but if you've used my product, and if you hashtag Dina Wakely Media, I follow that hashtag and then I will see it. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and so I, I look at this hashtag every single day. And so does, I think Ranger does too. <laughs> and to make sure Ranger does see what you do. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, also, hey, my friends. Also hashtag Ranger Inc. Because we regularly run searches on both of these hashtags. Because it is one of my great pleasures to see what kinds of things you're making. Every now and then I will just pick the, some of the most recent shares under my hashtag and I put them in my story. And it, this is how Ranger um, also comes up with, pro, you know, prize winners for Show Us Your Media and all this stuff. So it is super important. You guys are joining me from Australia, from England, Norway. I'm so happy you are with me. Isn't it really early in Australia? <laughs> My goodness. Hi from the Netherlands. Hello, hello. My pleasure to do this, you guys. I'm, I figure, you know, I've noticed a lot of people in the community doing video, live videos and all this stuff. And I just think it's it's so great. Like Dee Dee says, this community, this art community is awesome. And it is a great way to connect and to get through this time. So remember to hashtag. Cool. So the videos are going to be whatever I feel like on the day. And so, so today, oh, Ellie, 3 a.m. Uh, today, it is going to uh, be a little bit more involved of a demo. And then some days it might be simple. I'm totally happy to take requests. Um, and so just let me know. But I really hope to do this daily and come together and get you excited about making and keep us healthy and happy and just give you guys my encouragement and support. And it also was a reason to get up, <laughs> get in the studio and get over my own anxiety. Okay, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a tab book. If you have been in classes with me the last few years, you have made this book. And so many times people will say to me, oh, do you have a video on this? Or are there instructions? And I'm like, uh, no, the instructions are in my head. So this is a great way to, you know, fill this promise that I've made to people for years saying, oh, I will put that on video someday. Uh, well, someday is here. So this is a really easy tab book, T-A-B, tab. And here's what you're going to need. Um, you, you need some sort of pages. So I'm using media board because I like the thick chunkiness of it. Hey, Jean, I'm from Michigan. Uh, so I'm using media board. This is an entire package of media board that I've 
cut into quarters. So I've got 12 pieces. You can use um, loose pages. The great thing about this tab binding is that it is a binding that binds single pages. So this does not require a signature. And I'm always tearing up journals and I have loose tags and pages everywhere. So I always need a way to to bind single pages. And there are not a lot of bindings um, that bind single pages and still open flat. So there are Japanese stab bindings that will bind single pages, but not, um, not, uh, you know, ones that open flat. Okay. So I'm using this. You can use cardboard, chipboard, tags, paper, whatever you want. You just need loose sheets, okay? Um, and then you're going to need a sheet of sticky back canvas. If you don't have sticky back, what you can do is you can just use any flexible material, any fabric, and just some strong glue. Um, sticky back is so easy, though, you guys. I also want to shout out to all of the store owners that are out there who are trying to make a living and pay their rent now that... Um, there are some mandatory closings. If you own a store and if you are doing drive up service and if you are willing to ship, can you please comment now? Comment on any live that I do and even on my page and I will share it if you're willing to get these supplies in people's hands. You guys, it's so important. Um, the economic impact on me is severe. Um, with, with so many of my events canceling. However, I'm not in a terrible, terrible situation because I'm not the sole bread earner. Um, there are people in my position who are sole bread earners. They're service industry people, and these store owners are scared. So please, 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 um, store owners, please post uh, and you know let people know that you're, you're willing to drop ship or drive up or whatever. Okay, so sticky back, cool beans, and uh, scribble sticks. I say all the time that I never keep scribble sticks in my tin, and, and I, you know, people are like, yeah, whatever. This is how I keep them. <laughs> this is set two. This is set one. I also have set three in the drawer, and I have a couple of, you know, I have various sets in here, you know, more than one set in each basket because I'm me, but... Uh, you're going to want a scribble stick today, probably. And we're going to use the new gloss sprays. Now, let's say you don't have gloss sprays today, and you're like, oh, I still want to make this book. It doesn't matter. You, you know, any single scrapper will, or <laughs> any single page will work for this tab technique, okay? But I thought because uh, gloss sprays are new and they're starting to show up in everybody's hands, I'll show you one of my favorite ways to use them on this raw media board. So media board's interesting, and a lot of people don't get it because in the package it doesn't look that spectacular. I do use it a lot, especially for bookmaking. It's got this canvas on one side and then a paper backing. And what I discovered with the gloss sprays is that if you're using unprimed board, meaning we have not gessoed this, that it soaks in initially like a stain. And it's it, it just gives a really different look than paper gives. And so I'm kind of crazy in love with, <laughs> with it. And this is gonna make some of you a little twitchy because you are so not gonna want to do what I'm gonna show you right now. But, uh, you know, I do love to punish my class. It, it has been um, long documented that I'm a bit of a sadist. <laughs> oh, I know, I'm gonna miss you guys. Um, I am so sorry about all these cancellations, but we wanna keep you safe. We wanna be team players. You know, anywho. Um, also, all of you store owners, if you want to teach this project or technique, um, please do. All right. So I'm going to take my unprimed media board and I'm just going to do a little bit of drawing on the board. You could totally stamp on the boards as well. Um, I'm going to draw some just weird faces because that's what I like to do. The great thing about doing faces like this is you actually don't have to worry about proportion at all. Okay, so let me do that again. So what I do is I, I'm going to start with an eye. And am I really drawing an eye? No, I'm not drawing an eye. I'm drawing a weird scribbly mark. And then without lifting my scribble stick up, I'm going to add a nose. 
and sometimes they end up fat, skinny, who cares? And then I'm going to, without lifting my stick up, so this is kind of a contour drawing, I'm going, ooh, this one's really angry, a little serial killer. <laughs> Remember, expression's in the eyes, so if you uh, angle your eyes weird, you'll have serial killers. Okay, so don't lift it up. I come down, I draw the mouth. I come down and I draw a circle around. I draw a lot of these at church. If this looks like that new funny peep set of mine that I'm kind of obsessed with, it's because I sit in church and I draw these and they just make me happy. Okay, so you can do that on a bunch of them. Uh, if you don't want to draw people because that's not your thing, I understand. I'm maybe just going to draw a leaf. You can draw a leaf on a stick, right, you guys? I'm pressing pretty hard. I'm laying quite a bit of that scribble stick down. Leaf on a stick. And drawn so carefully. <laughs> All right. La, 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 la. Uh, you can draw circles, right? Okay, so once you've done a few with that scribble stick, you may be bored. <laughs> I always say my ADD serves me well. So I'm going to take some gesso and mini blending tool. And I'm going to put some gesso down. Do you remember this? These, this is a set or a stencil that came out a release or two ago. It's called Uneven Shapes. So you get the stencil part and you also get the shape part to use as masks. I'm going to use the mask part. And I'm going to just mask around with gesso. So, of course, this gesso will act like a resist. So anything left unprimed will give us that stain effect. And anything primed is going to look different. The reason I'm using this particular mask is because it was top on the box, in the box. And I didn't have to look for another one. You can also grab stencils. So I, I always think it's embarrassing that I don't remember what my stencils are called. The only reason I knew what uneven shape was called is I have one over there that's not open. <laughs> so I don't remember what this one's called. If anybody remembers, pipe up. So I'm not being very careful with this, but you get the idea, right? If I miss a question, post again because I'm not necessarily paying super good attention okay so just gesso polka dots let's go back do a few more sticks with leaves last one crazy face I love these because you don't have to have skill. You know, I always say that I'm self-taught with everything I do. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it, right? Okay, those are done. Um, I put that gesso on so thin that I don't really have to wait for it to dry forever either, too. And I know I live in Arizona. It's actually raining today, though, you guys. So, all right. So now, I want you to turn to your gloss sprays. If you don't have gloss sprays, you know what you can do? Um, just, you can use dilutions. You can uh, use, you can just use acrylic paint on these. Just paint them. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stress you all out and I am going to pour some of the gloss spray on the board, okay, in a puddle. And you know what helps to have nearby too is something for blotting and I don't wanna waste all this gloss spray so I've got a pile of tags. You could blot it in a journal, whatever you want. So this one's almost gone. So I'm going to, I know that I, but I know there's enough left to pour. So I'm going to give myself a little stripe of gloss spray. So now what's interesting about that is that that gloss spray is now staining, soaking in right there. Okay. Now let us add another color. What's interesting is, is see how those are mixing. Because that yellow is already stained underneath there, you actually are not going to get the mixing 
happening on that, that initial yellow piece. It stays as a stripe. All right, are you guys stressed yet? So I'm gonna blot a little bit because I've got oh, 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 oh. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and blot because I've got a, I'm swimming in gloss spray at this point. Hello, look at I mean seriously, that is fantastic. Okay, and then oh my goodness, look at that! That's delicious. Let's blot that. That one's starting to turn muddy. All right. So once you've done enough blot, <laughs> I'm swimming, uh, come over here and paper towel off. Even though I always say I'm trying not to use paper towels, they really are the perfect thing for this. So blot off excess after you've done a few tags or journal pages or whatever. Do you see that initial yellow um, stain? Isn't that so cool? You saw the other colors go crazy over there, right? You saw them start to mix. And then all of a sudden, you, when, you, when you blot it all the way off, it you've got these really cool color fields. So yeah, these are acrylics. Karen, by the way, just po Karen, I haven't watched your video. I still haven't watched your I Met Dina Wakely video. I'm sorry. But Karen just today, I think, posted a, like, tons of different techniques um, to use with the gloss brace. So I will f look up Karen um, and then I will um, try to repost that today. I'm so behind on stuff like this. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it. Let's see. So tempting to pull <laughs> some prototype colors. <laughs> All right, I won't torture you that bad. All right. Now, will you will your scribble stick start to dissolve a little bit because you're pouring something wet? Well, yeah. Are you gonna just be a piece over it? Well, yeah. You're gonna get over it, right? You know what? We're 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 piling so much spray on this. I'm wondering, we're gonna try an experiment. You guys ready? I'm gonna kiss. Um, I'm going to blot it with one of the other media boards, basically. I'm going to kiss them together, see if I can color two at once. Squish! <laughs> Hello! I think I might be able to do like 20 at once here. So here's the squished one. It's looking good. Let's try two. By the way, I forgot to shut the door. My cats are staying out for now, but if they come in, I apologize. Oh, okay. I'm kind of in love with that one, you guys. <laughs> I always joke that I have really low standards for my own personal artwork, but it's kind of true. Uh, I, I don't beat myself up over stuff. If it turns out bad, I just laugh and say, well, that, look, that turned out really bad. I don't care, you guys. Bad art is so much better than doing none at all. Oh, there's that resist happening. That was the, you know, one of the ones that I had gessoed. It almost looks marbled. Oh my gosh, I seriously Beetlejuiced my cat. Did you hear that? I just heard him. I heard a little meow. All right, I'm gonna spray some of these. You don't just have to pour. To get that really lovely stain line, you have to pour it, okay? Um, but if you just wanna color them, you certainly don't need to pour. Remember, these acrylic sprays. They are, um, they are paint, they are not ink. They are permanent when they're dry, so they're non-reactive. When they're dry, they will not lift. They have to be shaken like spray paint from the store. They will resist each other. 
after a while. So this is Media Board. It is a Dina Wakely Media product. It just in the package, it just like looks like sheets of white stuff. <laughs> um, so it might not be that exciting in the package, but I use it. I use it an awful lot. Look how cool those stain. I just love that, you guys. All right, let me just fly through these. Okay, should have pre-done some of them. I love not thinking, you guys. It's the best. You must have palettes of your gloss sprays. Um, I do know where they're made. <laughs> uh, they, they last they last longer than you think. Um, and so that's why, too, if you do start pouring them, uh, don't, don't just paper towel up all of it. Be sure to blot, use it. If you don't want to end up with weird colors, you do need to think about your color theory. A little bit. I mean, a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> you might be swimming. So let's say you get gloss spray on your telephone. I mean, not that you would get it on your thousand dollar phone, <clears throat> uh, but, or on your nails or on your diamond ring or anything like that. You can get it off with just an, with rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer. Good luck finding hand sanitizer or rubbing al alcohol right now, right? But, should you have some of that, that's the mask that I did, isn't that cool? Should you have some of that, you will be able to get it off just fine. Okay, last one, let's do one more pour. So remember, how to get these not to clog is to keep the caps on them, okay? And if you ever need to scratch if you ever open one and it's not spraying, scratch the little dried skin off the tip. Um, if they do die all the way, and I have to say, even though, I, and I abuse them something fierce, um, I still have had very few die all the way. But if they do die all the way, you, you know, you've still got all this paint in there. They're not, they're not dead. You can still use the paint, right? Okay, look at these paper towels. <laughs> this is not one that I will be saving for use on another day. All right, so let me just sort of clean my area here. La. Are you scared or are you guys excited to try this? La. Okay, so now let's get to the tab binding. You need to have tabs. And so, like I said earlier, it's so much easier, I think, to use sticky back canvas because you don't have to stop and glue. You don't have to wait for glue to set. Sticky back canvas is still available in eight and a half by 11 white sheets. You can ask your store, your local store to order it for you if they do not have any. And you'll you'll find that you'll you're you'll use it for all kinds of things. The great thing about it is it is canvas a sticker with a sticker on the back, and so anything that you can do to paper paint your journals, you can do on this canvas. So you can stencil it, spray it, paint it. I remember for years I was giving out pieces of sticky back to, to be binding bindings for journals that I was doing. And every single time the binding would just be a quarter inch short. And I would think, man, I'm bad. I'm so bad at cutting things, seriously. Like, can I not cut this properly? I'm such a moron. And finally somebody said to me, well, remember, canvas shrinks when it gets wet. <laughs> I had been teaching with it for years, not realizing that after we painted it, that my canvas was shrinking. Duh. So anyway, this is why it'll curl as you start to paint it or spray it. I'm using um, one of my basic chipboard shapes. I love this little curly cue. Okay, you know why that's coming out in a straight line? Because I need to pull any extra off. There we go. See how that fixed it? All right, so you're gonna go ahead and do whatever you feel like to this. 
and then you're gonna cut it into little tabs. So I, I did pre-do this. So I cut my tabs about two inch by one and a half inch, okay? And you're gonna have an assortment of those ready to go. People, all of you guys that um, are exact, are gonna wanna know the exact number. And I don't know, we'll see when we're done with the book. I think it's 17, but we'll, we'll double check here in a second. So cut that up. I started cutting it with, I did find my paper cutter. I started cutting it with paper, paper cutter and it got so annoying, I just finally turned to scissors. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pile up my pages in the order which in which I want them to be in the book. So in page order. Ideally, you would let these dry because a sticker is not gonna wanna stick to something wet very well. Um, and I didn't pre-do any of them, so, you know, we'll survive. This is Arizona. I still love that one. I don't know why. I mean, these aren't finished. These are just backgrounds, right? So we still can come, oh my gosh, look at that deliciousness. We still can come and uh, create on these pages once the book is bound. This is a great little gift book too, project to do with kids also. Again, if you don't have sticky back canvas, you can use strong tape. You could use duct tape. Duct tape would work. You could use fabric with a little bit of glue, whatever you want. All right, so there's my pages. So there, they are now in order in which I want them to be bound in the book. Now this book is a pattern and so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to go through page by page and you'll catch on to the pattern pretty quickly and then you'll see how kind of cool it is. All right. So here are my tabs. I'm going to, let's see if Dina Wakely can get the sticker off of the tabs. <laughs> okay. All right. So w with the pages here. With the first page on the top, on the right side, I'm gonna take the sticker off one of the tabs and I'm gonna put a tab at the top and I'm gonna put a tab at the bottom. I also wanna mention where I learned this. So I, I saw a book at Art Fest years ago and I picked it up and I was like, okay, that is so cool. And it was a book by Stephanie Lee and she wasn't teaching and it was one of her samples on her desk and I picked it up and took a photo of it and then I figured out how to do it. So I don't know if Stephanie invented this binding. If she did, she definitely gets credit. I've tried to find out who invented it. I don't know, maybe there's no inventor. I don't, maybe it's a common thing, I don't know, but um, that's where I learned it. Okay, so page one, I've got a tab here and a tab here. See how it's sticking out, sticky there? I want you to pick that first page up and turn the page just like you were turning the page in a book. Okay, so we've got, let's see, I wanna make sure that I, you can see this on the screen. Let me scoot it over just a little bit. Is that better? Okay, all righty. So next book, next page is going to get one tab. One tap on the next page. So just remember that you are going to lose a little bit of whatever you've made. This is why I think it's good to maybe not do finished pages because when you put a tab over it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's ruining my page. Well, if it's just a background, you don't care yet, right? All right, so one tab is gonna go in the middle. And then you're gonna pick that page up, turn it over and put it on top of the pages that are building up on your left side. Now, remember those first two tabs on page one? You're gonna grab those first two tabs and you're gonna pick them up and you're gonna stick them to the back of page two. And you're gonna leave this tab that you just stuck on page two, you're gonna leave it un uh, unstuck. You're gonna leave it sticking out. Now, on page three, I'm gonna put a tab at the top gonna put a tab at the bottom okay same deal go okay I know isn't that back cool oh. uh, I'm going to flip the page and 
I just put two on, right? So I don't want to bend those ones over. I want to bend over the number one that's, that's two pages back or one page back, okay? So basically, if I put two on this side, when I flip it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bend over one. If I put one on this side, when I flip it, I'm going to bend over two. So like if you bend over one on the left, you're going to put one on the right. Okay, flip it. So now I just put one on, so I've got to bend two. Okay, so I just bent two. I've got to put two on the right. Now, I have done this with, um, I mean, this this look, this look is going to end up looking cool and chunky because of the width of the media board. I have done it with plain paper. I used to tear, like, all my favorite pages out of my journals, and then I would rebind them with this method in, like, one massive greatest hits, which I have since cannibalized. <laughs> I've since torn that up. So, anyway. All right. So two on the two on the right, flip. This is a test. Which one do I turn? Which one do I bend up? Do you guys know? One, right? So I bent over one on the left. That means I've got to put one on the right. See how it's so much easier to do with sticky back? So, I mean, if you were having to glue, ugh. Have mercy. Um, but duct tape would work or, you know, really strong washi or something like that. Okay. One tab. Yep. Good job, you guys. You're getting it. All right. And I don't pay attention if my tabs have lined up. Um, it probably would be smart to do that. But, you know, I am Dina. Listen, I'm 50. I am so not going to change my stripes at this point. I am what I am, as Popeye said. My poor husband. He folded laundry yesterday. And it, my pile was sitting nice and neatly on the bed. And I picked it up and threw it on the floor. <laughs> oh, bless him. Okay, flip. So I just put two. So that means I've got to do the one. So the, another nice thing about this book, my friend. Oh, drywall type. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, another nice thing about this book is that it can be as many pages as you want it to be. So if you want it to be 100 pages, you just keep making tabs, right? Um, and there's no reason why you can't do this with tags. There's no reason why you can't have substrates of different thicknesses. The nice thing about Sticky Back 2 is it has a tiny little bit of forgiveness. So if you fold two on the left, we're almost done, you guys. Can, we should make a song. If you fold two on the left, then you put two on the right and flip the page. If you fold one on the left, then you put one on the right. La 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 la. All right, so you're going to put two, flip it, and fold one. And again, if you, if you are someone who needs this to be exact, Go ahead and do your, you know, go ahead and measure. It'll look better than my hot mess, but I'm not trying to turn you into me. I'm so annoying, you guys. You don't need more of me in this world. La, 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 la. Okay. Now, we are on the second to the last page. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, I know. Second to the last page. So I, I do like to end with two tabs on the second to the last page, just for stability for the book. You can actually do five tabs. You could do three and then two and then three and then two. Do you, do you get the idea? Okay. So second to the last page. See that? So I'm going to flip it and I'm going to, I'm going to put over, bend over. <laughs> you guys, I haven't had enough Diet Coke today. I can't use my words. Um, I'm going to bend over um, one tab. Now, because this is the very last page, I do not need to put tabs on the very, very last page, right? What I need to do is just, oh, I love that, by the way. Mm -mm -mm. All right. What I need to do is just flip it, put it on the pile, and then I've got the remaining two tabs, and I'm going to go ahead and 
bend them over. So here's the spine. Two, one, two, one. So I guess the bottom line is you need an even number of pages and that way you end up with the last page having a two for having the two tabs to, to, to hold it in. Okay, so here's what's cool about this. Doesn't it look delicious? Don't you just love a chunky book? Like if it was this fat, would you just not wanna, wanna marry it and have its babies? Okay, so here's page one. And then what's cool is look, it lays flat. And they're hecka strong with the sticky back. Um, you're, you are gonna get a little bit of give here, right? Because when I turn this page, there's only one tab holding it, which is why if you wanna do three and two, you will have a more stable construction, okay? Um, if you do three and if you do three and two, it's just a lot more sticking, right? So you, the, it'll lay flat, which is kind of cool. And then you've got this fun little book. And so then, what do you do with this? The answer is yes. You've got a little pocket journal, um, draw, stamp, create, collage. The answer is yes. Maybe some of these tags that you used for blotting that are lying all over the place end up on pages, you know, this just becomes, you know, this becomes your, your little muse. Look at this one, you guys. I mean, really. Hello, lover. Pockets. I can come back with, still a bit damp, but what I love about the Stabilo pencil is that it, of course, will write on stuff when it's still wet. Oop. That one is dead. All right. And I can decorate. So did that make sense, you guys? Anybody have questions that I missed? I'm gonna look at the screen right now while I make this little sketch so that I can catch up on any questions. I noticed that some of you guys were answering them for me, which I really appreciate. Thank you for that. If you want to pre-stamp a bunch of images, then you could just start collaging, right? Ooh, I didn't give her a neck. You don't necessarily have to draw. I, I started as a stamper. I am forever a stamper. I love stamping. <laughs> stamping makes me so stinking happy. So you can create however you like. And this can be any size. So this is a Stabilo All. A-L-L. Stabilo is the brand. The nice thing about it is it writes on everything. So I can come and write on acrylic paint because it's meant to write on plastic. The disadvantage is that um, it's not permanent. So, you know, the board, it comes in nine by 12 sheets. Um, and so you can cut it down or it comes in an assorted pack. Okay, I told you guys I was gonna watch for questions and then I didn't watch. Yes, you can absolutely stamp on the media board. Just remember that the media board does have a canvas you know, a, it has a canvas side. So stamping on anything bumpy can be a little bit tricky. So make sure you use a really wet ink pad or I like, if I'm gonna stamp on this, it's a four pack, Sue. Wait, maybe I'm wrong. No, no, you're right, Sue, it's a three pack. Hi, Curdy. So definitely, um, okay, I'm, I'm totally losing my train of thought, you guys. What were we talking about? Oh, the media board, stamping on the media board. One of the ways that I will um, get success stamping on it is I'll put acrylic paint on the stamp, spray the stamp twice with water, and then stamp on the media board, and it totally will um, work better than an ink pad. Now, if you don't have the sprays, can't you, you could uh, take a little bit of acrylic paint, let me see. There's one thing that I have a lot of here. It's acrylic paint. You can take a little, of a, little bit of acrylic. So this is Blackberry. 
and go ahead and wet it. So I came home from my last trip a little while ago and I had so many brushes sitting in water that had been there for like 10 days. Oops. All right, you can wet it and just do a wash of color on the board, right? It's not gonna be quite the same stain effect, but it's gonna look lovely. I mean, before um, sprays came out, I, I used to paint, well, I still do, I paint on this media board all the time. I mean, it, this media board is like painting on canvas. So, and the advantage is it's backed with chipboard, so it's got some rigidity to it. Um, I also pour on the board a lot. It, I'm, what I'm digging over here is I'm digging in one of my um, half-done art uh, art bins because I knew I had a bore. I knew I had a pour. So this is media board done with the acrylic pour, and Kathy from Ranger, who is stinking awesome, she does a lot of the sourcing and and helps us with getting a lot of the products made. Um, she figured out. It just never occurred, this never occurred to me, <laughs> because simple minds. Uh, so she figured out that once you pour, because you have to pour on a rigid surface, you have to, otherwise it, all right? Yeah, washi won't hold. You, you're definitely gonna have to have to glue it with washi. Washi is meant to be a remo removable adhesive. Anyway, so here's what Kathy figured out, is that after you, whatever you've done on the media board, after it's dry, you actually can separate the canvas. See this? You can separate the canvas from the chip. Okay, so the chipboard, can you can save it if you want. I just throw it away. Um, but now I've got this flexible piece of art. And this can become a book cover. I totally would fold that in half. I would find signatures to go in there. And then you can hand sew it, or I'm gonna just pop it in my sewing machine, you guys. My sewing machine, I do not sew heirloom baby christening gowns on my sewing machine. It is an artistic tool. Yes, it's covered in paint. Yes, it's a hot mess. No, I don't care. All right, so, you know, I, I mean, I would probably would find pages that actually fit in that little book, but you know, then I would sew it. You could punch holes and do a pamphlet stitch. Um, and that before you do that too, you could paint this side or even glue tissue, right? So all of a sudden your pores, your stains can become this flexible little piece of art. If you have a die cutter, so I always laugh that I own, a, I own one Sizzix die that Tim gave to me and I had to go buy a big shot to use it. <laughs> and I still only own one Sizzix die. But so I don't have a die cutter, but if you have a die cutter, you could totally run these through, right? and you could make cool shapes out of, out of your media board pieces. So media board is, is more versatile than you think it would be. And I really love it. I love that pour, by the way. Isn't that cool? All right, any other questions that I missed? You see a face on the folded pour. I'm looking, which side? Oh, I just love that pour. I could get lost in that pour. All right, sorry. I keep saying I'm going to pay attention, but I'm really bad attention deficit. Oh, squirrel. Anything else, my friends? I don't want to take up too much of your time. So one little weird quirk about me, not that you need me to talk about myself all the time, um, is I, I have a fear of overstaying my welcome. So like if you invite me over to your house, I will not hang out for hours and hours. It just may, I just feel like... I'm going to overstay my welcome. So I don't want to do really long rambling videos. Um, masking tape would work if it's nice and sticky. Yes, this will be rewatchable. I will save it to the page. Facebook does not delete the videos once they are saved to the page. And I also will try to download them to my phone and uh, or to my computer and get them on my blog. I'll try. Uh, the turquoise eye. Cool. Don't you just love it? Uh, can you use the pour method in the media journal? So here's the deal. When you are pouring on a surface that is not rigid, what's gonna happen is as that dries, the paper 
the surface is going to absorb the moisture. And what I have found when I have poured on something not rigid is you look, you could love your pour. In fact, one time I made the best pour of my life on a piece of watercolor paper. Okay. So then I went to Target because it needed to dry. I came back and as that pour dried on the paper, the paper absorbed moisture and the paper started to curl. Just like Sue says, this paper will curl. Paper, loose paper will curl. And as it curled, because that pour is not dry, even one millimeter difference, what will happen is that pour will start to run. And it will turn and run. And so my beautiful pour that was the best one I did in my entire life, I came back and it was one giant puddle of mud in the middle. Yeah, this is Ranger. It's Tina Wakely Media. Yes, Ranger Media Board. So that's when I learned my lesson that, yes, you can pour on paper, but as it curls, as it dries, it will change your pour unless you somehow anchor it, anchor it down. And even then, it still might a little bit, which is why my favorite surfaces to pour on for sure are media board and then wood panels. It just, I have better success with those two surfaces. Tim has um, those hardboard panels that are awesome to pour on. He did them for alcohol ink, um, but I was like, oh, yeah, they're great for alcohol ink, but they are, they would be awesome to pour on. He also has, you know, those really big, like, tags that he did? Oh, somebody that actually knows the name of this product, will you, <laughs> will you pipe up? I love those big like MDF big tags that he did. Anyway, those are awesome for pouring. Just anything rigid for sure. I hope this made sense. This um, little book, you can, de you know, if you, if you probably, half of you have had classes where uh, we did this book. Do you remember it? Isn't this a blast from the past, this book? Isn't it so fun, et cetera. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Sue. Yep, and Karen, et cetera, tags. Yes, you guys know. I love those. Oh my gosh. So good. All right. Any other questions or ideas? Please make them. Make them. And then what are you going to do? Make this book with any substrate you want. Doesn't have to have gloss spray. Doesn't have to have media board. But uh, make it. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Insta. And make sure you hashtag both Dina Wakely Media and Ranger Ink. Yeah, a lot of this will be new to you guys. Um, if you tape down the edges of your water, the thing is, it's still, maybe if you do it on a block, um, Carol, does this book have to be made with hard pages? It does not. You, it, it just has to be made with single pages. So as long as you, uh, you know, I, have something have singles you can still do tabs now it won't be thick and chunky right but you this the process is exactly the same so if i had stacks of tags make your make your tabs smaller and then you you totally can uh can bind anything any single pages with this method yes every day at 10 if for some reason I'm not going to make it, I'll let you know. But for the most part, I'm planning on every day at 10. This one was a little more involved. It might not be quite as involved, but this is just what I felt like doing today. Definitely drop me a line, too, if you have a request. Jillian requested some gel plate. So car hit, pull, power went out. What is up with people? People have lost their minds, y'all. All right. Ooh, doorbell. So Margo... You, this will be on my page and you can continue to watch it. Okay. You'll be able to watch it again and again. I'm going to go answer my doorbell. Does book binding work, Dina? What kind of, what do you mean book binding? You mean book binding tape? Yes, it would be cool with my heavyweight cotton paper. Hashtag wish list. Totally agree. I wonder who's at my door. All right. I'm going to go answer my door. I'll come back. Um, yeah, totally. You can use tags, bookbinding tape, anything sticky or just glue it. Okay. Bye you guys. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Bye.